Hi, I'd like to make uh, an order. One second, please. Sure. Your name, please? Dan Roto. Dear, do you, uh, did your dad work at TTC? My uncle did, actually. Roto, oh god. Vince. Yes, yes. Who's that? Your that, uncle? That's my uncle. No kidding. Do you know him? I do, really well. I just needed to get two uh, pint kits of the Mold Star 16 fast. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay, wow, well, yeah. Okay. Uh, that's great. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll, I'll talk to you later. Okay, Bye. Bye-bye. Why did that conversation get so awkward so quick? Okay, I'll talk to you later. I wasn't ready for that. I was, I was, <laughs> I was ready to shoot this whole intro to be like, hey, what, what the hell is going on? You know, and then, and then it kind of just took a weird turn with that. What's up, guys? This week, we're doing DIY that I've actually wanted to do since I got the 3D printer. We're going to make an ice crown. Crown, in general, made of resin. This DIY has quite a few steps. It's almost like it's combining all of the techniques into one. So it's going to be a bigger one, a little bit more expensive to make. Most of the stuff I make from here on out, I'll probably be selling on my Etsy page. So if you guys are interested, it's in the description down below. The Peacemaker. This one's going to California. This one's staying in Canada. This morning, we have quite a few errands to run. You guys are going to come with me. Oh, I might have to go to my store. Locker. I've got clay for mold making. I'm hoping this is gonna be a good one. Let's go to the car. We're on to stop number one, which I'm not really gonna film because it has nothing to do with this video. If you guys have bought any of my art off my Etsy, I have to do these errands in the morning sometimes, like get the packaging and shit. Couple cardboard boxes, baby. Like if there was a dollar store near me, that would be, ooh. It's expensive, guys. As always, the good DIYs are expensive. They've now made it mandatory to wear masks in Toronto, like when you're going in stores. I wonder if there's been like an uptick in like robberies because they're now telling us like hide our identities. Look, when I put my sunglasses on, like you're not really getting much info about my, my face facial appearance. Okay, the last errand of the day. Yes, there it is. Right at the front. Natural clay. Turn off the light. Let's go home. All right. So we got clay. A lot of this material is the same. I'm gonna go through it really quick. Foam core. You need natural clay and that is for the mold. The mold star 16 fast. This is silicone rubber mold. I got two pint kits because I think that's what we're gonna need. I bought this styrofoam ball just to fill airspace. I didn't want to use all clay because I didn't think I'd have enough. You'll need a glue gun and then a crown. So for me, I'm making a custom crown uh, on my 3D printer. I printed it yesterday because it took a full, I think, a 26 hours to print. Let me show you guys the crown really quick. Here's our crown. This was 3D printed. This took about 26 hours to make. The video that you guys are seeing right now is a time lapse and believe it or not, that did take 26 hours to film. I used a certain type of time lapse effect, this program that basically makes it look like it's growing from nothing. Uh, this is it. First off, the color doesn't matter. All we're doing is getting a mold out of this shape. It's very fragile, super fragile. This is very storybook-like. There's a bit of stringing. We're just gonna quickly sand it and clean it up a bit. Ah, oh, you know what I mean? Freaking snap the top, but I can glue that back on no problem, but it's so damn fragile. I just hope it holds in the rubber mold. Okay, we gotta glue that back on. It like super glue works really well on it. Actually, funny enough, this will make it stronger. We're gonna build our foam core, I guess, mold outline. Hey, welcome back. It's Narrator Dan. I'm actually gonna be guiding you guys through most of this video. First things first, you're gonna take your clay and flatten it down. I didn't have my roller, so I tried using a soup can. Uh, <laughs> didn't work at all. Then I used a burger flipper because that's what we do in this house, and we just spanked it. Just spanked that clay like it needs a spanking. You're gonna pop that crown on top to measure it to see if it fully surrounds it. This is actually working. And then you're gonna cut the excess clay because you need the walls to be flush with our foam core. At this point, we're gonna put our styrofoam ball in the center. The whole idea is to displace some of the silicone rubber so we're not wasting it. And we're just gonna cover up the bottom so it's kind of like a, a, a nipple. <laughs> if I don't have this ball here, all of that will be silicone rubber mold just wasted. Yeah, thanks Dan, just said that. Next, we're gonna move on to building our walls with the foam core. You're gonna cut out a piece and then you're just kind of flex it to round it out and then you're gonna glue it down. But it does not stick to mats. Foam core sticks to foam core. So that's what we're doing on top. You're gonna put a layer of glue around the cracks so there's no leaking. We don't like leaks up in this household, you know what I'm saying? You're gonna cut another wall, surround it just like the Coliseum and glue that down. Now to ensure there are absolutely no leaks, we are covering every single crack with glue. We're using a ton of glue, gluing the heck out of every crack. Don't go light on the glue because if you get a leak, it is a huge waste of silicone rubber and that stuff is expensive. So we got the crown sitting on the clay, the styrofoam ball is in the middle just to take up space. Sealed it with glue all the way around. This is where it meets, so I've loaded that up with glue. Next we're just gonna do our pour. Actually no, we're gonna spray mold release first. We are using mold release. 
All right, we're gonna let that sit for about three to five minutes and then we'll actually do our pour. Our silicone mold, we're just gonna use the entire thing. Part A, let's pour the entire thing. We only have six minutes pot life, which means it can only be in here before it's unusable. The faster the setting, the more it allows you to do in one day. They have some of this stuff that takes four hours. And if you're somebody that's new, I recommend taking the slower set one just because it's forgiving. Like if you make a mistake or whatever, you got four hours. This one's six minutes. So there's really no room for error. Let's just hope this crown does not float. Okay, first batch has been poured. Oh man. All right, round two. For our second pour, I just wanna point something out. If you look at the crown here, you'll see it start to slowly raise to the top. But anytime you're pouring silicone rubber, just know that it will make things float if it's light enough. This DIY just got a lot more expensive. We just used over $100 with silicone rubber for this. We for sure are gonna need one, maybe two more. We're this far, we can't stop now. I gotta head back, all the way back to the sculptor store. Oh, the crown is floating. Hold on. Ooh, we only need one more. I didn't realize that. I made it, guys. Thankful. Oh, I can take this off. What am I doing? Okay, I ended up getting the one gallon. Let me let me go over pricing really quick because this is such an annoyance for me. Whenever I'm selling stuff, it's not even like a lot of you. There's like specific people that don't even really watch my videos. They just like to complain. This was $260. I'm selling these art pieces for like 200 bucks and everybody that I've talked to outside of YouTube is like, that's all you're selling it for? And it's like in the art world, usually it'd be in the thousands. When I make art and when I say, hey, you guys can buy it on Etsy, it's by no means saying go buy, go buy. It's just if you want to this is what it's gonna cost you because that's the price I set it at based off of the time it takes, the materials that I've already invested. I just hate justifying pricing to people that maybe don't even understand art for the for, to begin with because you could really simplify anything. You look at basketball, you're like, well, all you're technically doing is throwing a rubber ball in a hoop with, with mesh. I just hate when people simplify things to undermine people's talents or things that they've made. It just really pisses me off. Silicone sticks to silicone, so even though it's gonna be fully cured by the time I get home, this is still gonna work. Let's go finish this off. Well, the first part. And we're back! Oh, look at this! Comes in actual little drums. Oh, thank you. All right, that's one. Beauty. Okay, guys, this is nine times the amount. Let's finish this off. It took an additional pint and a half or a total of 175 of just silicone rubber for this. While that's curing, I'm gonna show you guys a new toy that I got. To you guys, it's not a toy, but to me, it's a toy. My new degassing chamber. <laughs> now, with this thing, I'll be able to get crystal clear resin. This thing sucks all the air out of anything. We're gonna do a quick demonstration. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you saw this two days ago. So, follow me on Instagram. We're gonna take one marshmallow. We're gonna put it right in the center of this pot. You take the lid, pop it on. It just sits, like it literally just sits on. It doesn't clip on or anything. We're gonna turn this bad boy on. And we're gonna start sucking the air out of the chamber. You can see that the marshmallow is like three times the size. So we're gonna let the air back in slowly. Look at it now. Old man marshmallow. All the air has been removed. The texture now is like a gummy bear. Because there's no air in it, it's not fluffy anymore. It's like chewing on a gummy bear. In a nutshell, that's what the degassing chamber does. Looks like it's fully cured. Let's open this guy. These foam core walls did not want to come off of this mold. But then when I pulled it off, I was like, wow, this looks like a jacked mold with all its veins popping out. Okay. This is our little coliseum of a mold. It is very strong rubber. Since the 3D printed crown was super weak, I had to actually crack it in the mold and then take it out piece by piece the best I could. I've spent like an hour and a half trying to get the top of the crown out of this thing. It's not gonna happen. Usually when you make new molds, the first one is always really rough after the resin comes out. The first one cleans the mold almost like. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pour resin and hope that it bonds strong enough to the plastic at the top that the crown will come out fully intact. This DIY has literally been all day. Sun is setting the resin. As always, we're using art resin. No fumes, blah, 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 you know the speed. We have our resin. Pop it right there in the center. A bubble almost like the resin 
resin's boiling, like the, the air is gonna come to the top and that's how we're gonna get crystal clear resin. So now we're back into the vacuum degassing chamber. Right now I'm actually sucking all the air bubbles out and the reason why it's going up and down is because when it gets to the top, I'm actually letting the pressure out, and letting more air in. And now this is actually with full air taken out. It's bubbling to the point where there's almost no more air left in, which will leave us with crystal clear resin. Now, before we actually do our resin pour, we're just doing a quick spray of mold release. Because this is a deep mold, you gotta have this in there. Then we're gonna slowly pour. Tell me this is not the most satisfying shot. Anyway, speed it up. We're gonna leave that, see we will come back tomorrow morning. This comes out fairly easy. Fingers crossed. Day two. God, who would have thought? $175 right here. Looking at it now, it's not fully cured. All right, switch over to phone cam now. All right, here we go. So you can see that it did cure. How did, ooh, it did actually work. You can see the little triangles. Let's try to take it out now. I don't know how else to say this, guys, but I almost sacrificed my fingers trying to get this crown out of this mold. It was not easy. <gasps> oh, oh, it worked. This is obviously not the final product, but look. We got the yellow pieces off. This is a sample of what our ice crown will look like. It actually kind of looks cool. Next, we moved into our second attempt at pouring resin into this crown mold. We mixed it up and then poured it in. And then we hope for the best, honestly. Like, just manifest the best. Pop the bubbles, spank it a little bit more, loosen it up, boom. <sighs> day three. Day two was kind of a cop-out. Well, it wasn't a cop-out, but day two is very uneventful because I had to wait to our mold. This has been a challenging DIY. It's been all over the place. Once again, I had to go into Hulk mode to get this out for you guys. See what I do for you? Oh my God. Oh, fudge. We're missing one, two, three, four. Oh my God, I just thought of something. This is gonna add a lot more work. And away we go. What I'm actually doing is making a mini mold of the top balls of the crown. So I just kind of cut little squares, made a small little chamber, and then dunked in the top ball, just like that. So I got some part A of the silicone rubber, got some part B in a little syringe, injected it into this little chamber, dipped in the top ball of the crown that I wanted to mold, left it there for 30 minutes, and then demolded it. And I was left with this. Now I had to cut it down just like some blue cheese, just to get just the ball. I put in some UV resin. This stuff is expensive, but it cures under black light almost immediately. Popped it out and boom, I had the little ball tops that were stuck in the big mold that I can now just glue to the top of my current crown. I sanded it down first, popped on some super glue or gorilla glue and then stuck it on. All four caps have been super glued on. We're gonna leave this for like 30 minutes. Then we'll get into the cleaning up process. And just like that, it's done. Oh, that was a lot of work. As it stands right now, we have a full crown. It is not an ice crown yet. We have to sand it. Then we gotta spray it with glaze. All right, let's go outside. Welcome to the cleaning up process. First, we are sanding down any sharp edges that the resin cured as. We're gonna sand down the inside of the crown and the outside. You can see how like malleable the crown is here by how it's bending. It wasn't fully cured, but it was enough to sand. We're just getting rid of any blemishes before we coat it with glaze. Taking a quick detour here, if you look at the weather in the background, it's looking pretty scary. You're gonna see in a few seconds why, what happened. And once we were done with sanding, I rinsed it off to get rid of any of the resin dust that we created. Guys, the world is ending. Fire alarm? The fire alarm's going off now? This is building security. Please listen for further announcements. Maybe like an hour ago, I was outside sanding. Now it's like a freaking hurricane. Yo, you hear that? Very unexpected though. Who is a thunderstorm on like a Wednesday afternoon? This only sets my DIY even further back because I can't, I was going to blaze it. I needed to be outside. And Charlie's playing. <laughs> Not phased at all by the thunder. Damn, we were gonna do so much with this. God, look at it right here, holy. I'm sorry, I can't film with this going on. Look at this, look at how fast, <laughs> it's a hurricane outside. We were gonna glaze this, and just like that, the sun's back out. So we can actually spray this. Let's go give this a glaze. So what I'm using is a glaze that's triple thick diamond high gloss. 
This DIY is giving me a headache. It's already Wednesday night. This video was supposed to be up one hour ago. I'm falling behind here. It's not good. I hate uploading a video late, but I'm happy we were able to at least get this far. I looked it up and there was almost a tornado. Incredibly beautiful out right now. It's sunny, blue skies, it's hot again. It was like an hour's worth of a tornado storm. Very weird. You wouldn't even think it's the same day. This DIY is really testing my skills. It's put me over here, it's put me over here. I'm not quitting, we're gonna get this. Let's do it. Oh, four days. This is the longest DIY I've ever done. Here's what we're reporting. I'm gonna have to say this is our final product with the ice cream. I like it, man. I think it's really sick. I'm still learning a lot of this stuff, so it's gonna take a few different tries. I still have a clear crown. It cost me a little bit more than what I wanted. <laughs> if I can keep testing these out to try to get a good one, I will. If you guys follow me on Instagram, at Danocracy, I will be posting any sort of new updates in regards to this crown. I am not done. I actually went ahead and I made one highlighter green. As you can see, like, none of the nubs came out, which is a big problem, which I have to figure out how to do that. But what's cool about this one is when you shine a black light on it, it actually like glows. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video this far. It was a long one. I've got another fun DIY coming out next Wednesday. Be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't. If you're interested in any of my art, you can click the Etsy link in the description down below. Thanks so much for watching guys. And I'll see you guys in my next video. See you guys later.